morning. So what makes the superhero? Let's see if I can get the slides to come up. There it is. What makes a superhero? And for us to answer this question, we need to look at the character and the qualities of a superhero. <clears throat> First off, superheroes are usually known for their values. And these are their ideas of what they live by. And I wonder, hopefully, we can get you to see what uh, the slides here. OK, so uh, they, ha they start with their values and what they live by. And also, they're known for their superpowers. And they're also known for the actions that they take. So what I want to do today is take these three ingredients and try to craft the perfect superhero and hopefully inspire that superhero or group of superheroes to emerge in our world today. I want to start with a quote by a very creative individual. And he says, superheroes will always spark the imagination of people around the world, regardless of their background. Because I think people are always looking for something that represents the ideal person or the ideal situation. And this quote came from none other than the amazing Stan Lee. So if anyone knows superheroes, it's Stan Lee. And through this, you can see that people naturally are striving and seeking to get this ideal situation in their life, whether it's imaginary or real. So today, we're not going to talk about a fictional superhero. Today, we should talk more about you and how you can be a superhero and how you can create this ideal situation and become this ideal person. So let's talk about the values. They say a person is as great as the values he or she lives for. So what is it that you value? Let's think about this for a second. And many people have different answers, but what is so important to you that you would change the way you live your life? So some people will say, I would fight for my family or my friends, my spouse or significant other. Or maybe you value your school or your city or your country. These days, we have soldiers fighting for their country and, and dying for their country every day. What do you think a superhero would fight for? What is that? Justice. OK. Let's, let's pick something very tangible. Uh, because justice is rooted in one bigger value. Without the earth, we wouldn't have justice. So I would say the biggest value that all humans share as the highest common value is the earth. And even though this might seem like an obvious answer, we're not really taking care of the Earth very well. And the Earth is our only home, but it's actually in a lot of trouble right now due to problems such as unsustainable uses of resources and the irresponsible treatment of waste, devastated environments, deteriorated quality of life, and a collapsing ecosystem, just to name a few. So, even though we love our Earth, it's, the reality is this. So I think we can all agree that society has to make a commitment to change. So saving the Earth and changing is a big thing. So where do we start? We need to find out the root of all of those problems that we just showed and ask yourself, what's the one thing that all these crises have in common? Does anyone know the answer? 
right? <laughs> you know it. It's us. It's humans. So I want to share another quote with you. Let's take a look. This is by not Stan Lee, but another Lee. It's a spiritual leader. His name is Ilchi Lee. And he says, every human problem is created in the brain. And so is every solution. Right? So it's just a matter of changing the information on in our brain to have and share a common value. And what is that common value? Well, easily we can say, I'm a citizen of the Earth, and make Earth our common value. And when you do that, and have this Earth-centric thinking, everything changes. So I want to explain the concept of Earth citizenship by showing you this alien. Okay, so let's imagine you went on a space journey, and you landed on a foreign planet, and you met some sentient beings there. And when they welcomed you, they wanted to ask about, about you and information about you. What do you think is the first question they'd ask you? Would they ask you, what's your name? Or what kind of job do you have? Or what, how much money do you make? No, right? They, they probably don't have concepts of, of names or gender or occupations in their, their world. They'd probably most likely ask you, where are you from? And how would you answer that? Right. You wouldn't say, oh, I'm from Glendale, Arizona, or <laughs> it doesn't matter to them. You would probably answer with the most logical, I am from Earth. And please note that this is the most natural and accurate information that you can give to someone anywhere in the universe. But society now, we live in this uh, world where we think that our name, our occupation, our gender, our religion, our culture, our ethnicity is so important. But actually that information is kind of temporary or artificial or limiting. So if we accept the idea that we're from Earth and we're Earth citizens, then you'll take responsibility for Earth, like a superhero does. So let me give one more example of this. Uh, a lot of people nowadays eat organic foods, which is good. And they, but if you ask, why do you eat organic foods? They usually will answer, so I can be healthy. But if you shift to an Earth-centric style of thinking, it's not only just to be healthy, but it's by eating organic foods, I can protect the Earth and the land and the water and the people around it. And I think that's the best way to protect your health. And if you apply this kind of thinking to anything you do, I think the world will be a different place. So next, let me talk about powers. I think it's safe to say that everybody has superpowers. Society, though, sometimes doesn't let us tap into that. And even the way the culture and, and system of our society is today can prevent it. And I'd like to share a personal story of mine, my kind of origin story of how I was able to develop my natural powers and the insight I got from it. So let me just ask, does anyone here have asthma or know anyone who's had asthma or experienced an asthma attack? OK, there's a, there's a good number of you. Uh, for those of you who are fortunate enough not to have experienced an asthma attack, uh, I just want to show you, this is kind of what it feels like. It feels like you're drowning and gasping for air, but there doesn't even need to be water around. So it's not, not pleasant. But when I was in elementary school, I was diagnosed with asthma. and. Uh, Doing simple things like running through the playground or playing some sports. Uh, when I did that, I always had to make a conscious effort to, to make sure I don't you know, uh, choose the things that I could and couldn't do. 
and it wasn't fun. Even if I didn't do any strenuous activities, sometimes I find myself gasping for air like I ran a marathon. So I saw doctors and they told me, maybe you should take some medicine for that, and they gave me an inhaler. And uh, I was at a point where I was using the inhaler about five to eight times a day. It was pretty bad. And uh, from my elementary school all the way to my college years, I used this inhaler. I always had it with me. So for 15 years, I lived like this. I felt like um, this was the normal way of living. And I'll just accept it the way it is. I didn't really think about changing it. But let's fast forward to when I was in college. I uh, started taking a yoga practice, and I learned holistic exercises and breathing and meditation techniques to help me develop my, my body and mind. And when I started taking those classes, I, I, I used the inhaler before and after the class just so I could get through the class and breathe deeply through it. But uh, later on, my yoga instructor saw me using the inhaler, and I think he, he took it upon himself to uh, kind of give me some tough love. And he took the inhaler and he threw it away. And he said, don't use that anymore. And my initial reaction was, if I don't use it, I'm going to die. So, uh, <clears throat> so anyways, I, uh, he insisted and I listened. And I took the classes. And the first few months of taking the classes without using an inhaler were, were pretty miserable. Uh, I would take the class, and in the middle of the class, I'd already be huffing and puffing. And even during the quiet meditation parts, I'm in the corner, wheezing and coughing, and I think I'm disturbing the other, the other students. So sometimes I was so embarrassed, I even left the classroom so that they could meditate in peace. <clears throat> but I kept going, and I kept sticking it out. And what happened was I started to realize that I was actually forcing my body to learn how to breathe through it and to, to work through it. I was finally giving the opportunity for my body to heal itself because when I use the medicine, it's like I don't have to do anything. I just, medicine can do it. But through this, my body trained. When it was hard, my lungs stretched more and my body uh, learned and it healed itself. So now I don't have asthma and I haven't used an inhaler for since they threw it away. So I think, uh, especially for those of you who've had uh, that experience, I hope you can find the time to really uh, tap into your natural power. But what this helped me realize was that, let's see, we can see the slide, that everyone is perfect. Everyone has the ability to do whatever they want. We just have to allow for our innate powers to shine through. And what this also helped me realize was, as an Earth citizen, I have a responsibility to the Earth and the people on the Earth to share this message so that we could all become better. We need to change because society, I think we need to rethink how we use our abilities and what abilities we actually have. And how do we change? We need to take action. So what kind of actions should we take? Well, I think the best way to save the world is to empower yourself by living Earth-centrically and by living a healthy lifestyle. If, I think that's it. If we are all healthy, then we don't have to depend on medicines or equipment or doctors and other people. We, we can become the master of ourselves and make the life we want. So, okay. So I think all of this healthy lifestyle and earth-centric living can be summed up with these two words, mindful living. What is mindful living? You probably heard it in magazines and on TV shows. But let me show you a list of simple things you can do in your everyday life and adapt mindful living. They're, they're really simple. For example, remember the earth in all the things you do. Be mindful, be well, and help others become well too. Practice no waste. 
go local, green, and organic. Eat less and eat more vegetables. Get your body moving, be kind to people, and share good news and hope. So this list is very good, but it might be a lot of things to remember. So I have an easier way to re remind yourself what being mindful is and how to practice mindfulness. Mindfulness is being aware of yourself and connected with yourself. So I want to try something with all of you today to help you get in tune with your own body. If you could take one hand and put it on your head and one hand on your abdomen and just feel for a minute. <clears throat> if you feel that your head is hotter than your abdomen, can you raise your hand? Okay. If you feel your abdomen is hotter than your head, can you raise your hand? So which one is the optimal state? So to give you the answer, I'm going to ask the help of my trusty sidekick. And every hero needs a sidekick. So here she is. Let's see the slide, please. This is Happy Cow. Okay. So Happy Cow always reminds me of three things. And that is, let's see the slide real quick. <clears throat> that is to always keep, one, a cool head, two, an open heart, and three, a warm abdomen. So think about it. You've probably heard the expressions, oh, that person's cool-headed, or that, that's a hot-headed person. Or when you have a headache, usually your head feels hot, and when you have a stomach ache, your stomach feels cold. Or when you have a fever, your forehead is hot, and you're, you have chills in your body. So that's opposite of the uh, optimal state. This here is kind of the secret to health, and if you can just remember to keep this condition, I don't think you'll ever get sick. So when you have a cool head, you can calm your mind, you can think clearly and make good decisions. When you have a warm abdomen, you have courage and power and strength to take action and move. And when you have an open heart, you can have the clarity to do your actions with a very uh, high standard or high common value. So with that all said, we realize that this world needs some help. And you can help by trying to get this uh, happy cow energy state in your own life. And the superheroes that this world needs right now are people who live Earth-centrically. People who can tap into their natural powers and people who can live mindfully. So I hope that all of you can take this with you, incorporate it in your life, and open a new chapter in your own life, and proactively become that ideal person, and proactively create that ideal situation for our Earth. Thank you.